This week's Farm Basics is brought to you by SatShot.com. Satellites aren't just for NASA anymore. Use the power of satellite imagery to create variable rate management zones in your fields. To reduce input costs and increase yields on your farm, go to SatShot.com. Our Farm Basics today is on cover crops. We've never talked about cover crops before simply because we don't use cover crops on our farm. Well, if you're a non-farmer, you're wondering what, what, what's a cover crop? Well, it's a little bit different than the typical field crops that we're raising. Now, when we're raising corn and soybeans, we're trying to raise a crop, take it to yield, be able to harvest some bushels off that field, you know, harvest those ears of corn or those soybean pods and take it to town and sell that. With cover crops, what we're trying to do is after we've raised a crop, like wheat, for example, wheat's gonna be harvested here, depending on where you're at in the country, some has already been harvested, but in our part of the world, wheat is gonna be harvested real soon. After that wheat is off, we may not plant another crop until next spring. So what do you do the rest of the year to protect your soil from erosion for one thing? Well planting a crop out there is a smart thing to do because it's going to stop wind erosion, it's going to stop rain from washing soil away. That's one of the reasons that cover crops are used in our part of the world. Well, cover crops are especially used here, not so much uh, after wheat in our part of the world, but in the northern U.S. they are used very commonly when you plant alfalfa, for example. A lot of guys will plant alfalfa in the spring, and it takes alfalfa a long time to really get started and get established. So a lot of guys will throw some oats with it because the oats will get growing really quick. Oats grows in cold weather conditions and all of a sudden you've got something up again to prevent erosion. This erosion thing is really a huge issue. It's not that big a deal for us on our farm because we don't get very much moisture here. We don't have that many eroding rains during the course of a year, but in a lot of areas of the country where they have more rainfall, this is a huge deal. We were down in Brazil, for example, and you know where they're getting a hundred inches of rain. I mean erosion, that is their number one concern above and beyond anything else. Well, the big thing with topsoil is you can't just rebuild topsoil overnight. It takes many, many years, uh, decades, centuries perhaps, to build up lots of topsoil. So you do want to conserve what you've got and keep it out in the fields rather than in the rivers or in the ditches or something like okay, that. Okay, let's get to another reason why cover crops are raised, and that is to put more nutrients into the soil. Back a few years ago, we tore up an old cattle lot and we tried to raise soybeans. It was really late. It was probably mid-July and we raised some later beans in there. I don't know why why we did that, but that was that was my mistake. And so oh, we were raising just, just a little yeah, experiment. But, but but so we raised some beans. Well, they weren't going to make it to harvest. So what we did is we actually plowed those under to do something that's called green manure. And it basically is when you till those beans under before they reach maturity, you're tilling under a whole bunch of nitrogen and some phosphorus, potassium. You're putting nutrients into your soil by raising a crop. Well, here's a cool thing about crops like soybeans. Legume crops can actually take nitrogen from the air and convert it into a form that plants can use. So when you've got a soybean plant or a clover plant or alfalfa, they're going to be pulling nitrogen out of the air. So it's that much more nitrogen fertilizer that a farmer can put into the soil without having to actually apply commercial fertilizer. So it's great, it's so environmentally friendly, and it's really inexpensive. If you've got the yeah. ground and you've got time that that ground really isn't being productive, you can make it into productive time with a cover crop. Yeah, and the other thing, like raising those soybeans, they'll actually, those soybean roots, excrete sugars and, and organic acids into the soil and make some of the nutrients that aren't normally available, some of the phosphorus and potassium that's tied up in soil and not available, it makes it available and brings it into the soybean plant. And then when we till that under as green manure, that phosphorus and potassium is fairly readily available for next year's crop. So there are many different reasons why farmers may raise cover crops. The biggest reason why we don't on our farm is we have a shorter growing season, so we don't really need a cover crop, but beyond that, we don't have much moisture. So it's hard for us just to raise one crop, let alone two. Well, in Brazil, that certainly wasn't an issue. They had plenty of moisture going on. And, and you know what? Whether you have lots of moisture or not very much moisture, weeds can still be a problem no matter where you're at. So we're going to look at one of these tough weeds during our Weed of the Week segment. Can you identify this week's weed? 